Hey y'all, Sandra here again at the Chicken Coop, and today I wanted to show y'all all the hard work we got accomplished yesterday. We're getting things ready for winter in our garden, but it's also our winter preparations are also our preparations for spring. All right, so here's the garden. When I turned it around from where I was standing here at the front gate, it kind of shows you an overview of what my garden looks like. So yesterday, my husband was out here with the tractor and my son, and they were helping me. We got a lot of the compost. There's my compost pile. I've shown that to you before. And I don't have much compost left because we really have used a lot of it. We got a lot of that put into my beds. And then we also topped them off with some mulch. Um, here's my rose bush. Isn't it pretty? It's already it's blooming out again. This is called pinata. And I was able to get all the grass pulled out around the bottom of my rose bush and topped it off with some mulch. That's one of my chores I got accomplished yesterday. These plants here are called candlestick plants. Some people call them popcorn plants. They can get really big. Uh, they don't overwinter here really. Uh, they're more for zone 9 and 10. If we had a mild winter they might survive. Uh, but they grew that tall in one season out of some seedlings that I grew myself out of seeds. And I, uh, we topped this off with some compost and then some mulch into this bed. So this is my asparagus bed and I was just ready to get this all the jobs accomplished. So I cut them back, chopped and dropped them right there in the bed and we added some compost and then some mulch. So got this bed fixed and also too the support brackets across there had come loose and so uh, we got those put back together my husband worked on that so we got that job completed and then over here to this flower bed we added i got all the weeds out added some mulch on top of all that bed i also this was the bed that when i cut back some of my plants I spread the seed heads into this bed because I want this bed to just be full of wildflowers. So this is one of my herb beds. I cut back all the foliage, chopped and dropped it right there, and then we put some more compost and covered it up with wood chips. Added some compost to some of my empty tubs. I'm gonna probably put some wood chips on top of them and then even added some compost onto my pepper plants. Got all that done. This was one of my flower beds. I cut a lot of stuff back that was hanging out over the path so that my husband could get in here to mow. Plus I wanted to save the seed heads. I wanted the seed heads to fall into flower beds, not out here on the ground. So I got a lot of that done. This is my, still more seed heads in there, but I'll probably wait a little while longer before I cut all that back. But we got all that cut back. Got all this cleaned up. My husband worked a little bit on my rain barrel. It would needed a little bit more support and a little bit more structure. So we emptied that out, cleaned out the gutter that it drains to. He worked on it, repaired it. We added some mulch in here. This kind of gets a little muddy and it kind of is a drainage area. So we've been trying to add mulch on here so to keep that from washing out. So we got some mulch laid. And then my son power washed the roof of my greenhouse, got that all cleaned off for me. I really needed that. So that'll be good for winter so my plants get all the sunlight that they can through my roof. Today my goal is to get my greenhouse all cleared out so that I can put all my plants up. Get it all cleaned and organized so that we can get my plants put up for winter here in just the next short few months. We'll be ready for that. I want to leave them out as long as I can to enjoy them but I also need to be in preparation to get them put up as soon as I can. This is my broccoli and my cauliflower, my parsley. I harvested some parsley last week and got that dehydrated. 
my peppers, not my peppers, my peas are doing well. I've had a couple of pickings off of them, gotten a couple quarts bags. So be probably one more picking I feel like, and that'll be good. Under here, I've got some cabbage plants. They're doing well. I need to get some more row cover like that. I like that row cover. Got blue bonnets coming up in my blue bonnet tub. This is my basil. See how my basil has, even though I've cut it back a couple of times, it keeps flowering. So that's why I haven't completely cut it back all the way because it is still got some flowers on it and that's good for the bees. So I've just left it. Back to these tubs that I've put uh, more compost in. Picked up my tomato cages off the ground so my husband could mow again. Here's my cabbage plants. They look, they're looking good. My peppers are still putting out. There's the ongoing peppers. Real happy with those. All right, more cauliflower and broccoli. Got one, one tub that the plant died off right there but the rest of them I was very successful with so that turned out good I've got all this side uh, weeded out that those tubs on the far side I haven't gotten weeded so I, that's my job for one of my jobs today more broccoli and cauliflower I don't have anything at the end of this row so we put some more compost and more wood chips in there, top that off for winter. And then, so the only ones we'll have to worry about come springtime are these ones that have plants in them. Pulled some plants out of these that were past, filled them up, topped them up. Here's my garlic, some of my garlic coming up. Got to weed those out. We worked a little bit on this bed yesterday. We kind of got it, any weeds that were coming through, the chickens had gotten in here and scratched up, exposed some ground. When you have exposed ground, you always have weeds. So we try to keep this covered up with mulch. My husband brought a couple more bucket loads of mulch in here after we got the weeds pulled out. My garlic's coming up, I've got to weed those. Got to pull the last of these okra plants out. So this is all looking good. He got our dog pen all mowed. Ready for winter. Y'all saw the video a couple of weeks ago where we got the chicken coop all cleaned out. So now today I'm going to do a little bit of that weeding. And then I'm going to clean out and straighten up my greenhouse and get it ready. It's a wreck. It's amazing how this greenhouse can get so junky in such a short period of time. Oh, well, here's a project we did yesterday. I bought another eight foot of closet rod shelving so that I could extend my shelving in here in the greenhouse. That is a perfect size for trays for your seedling they just fit up there perfect and you can water and everything and uh, they're not real heavy anyway so i was really glad because that like doubled my space right there for that just wanted to show y'all what all we've been up to here at the chicken coop even even now i taught i said in my last video that you need to start preparing for your spring garden. And that's what we're doing. We, that's what we're doing is working on it. So if you've got a garden, it's fall, doesn't mean that you can stop gardening. You have to start preparing your garden for springtime. And if you do that, you'll have a lot more pleasant spring garden because you won't have to be doing all these chores on top of your other chores. Look at that big, pile of big pile of mulch that we had dropped off the other day 
we will put that to good use. That's going to go in the chicken coop into the run. So I showed y'all what all we've been up to. So let me get to work in this greenhouse and we will show y'all the finished product. So I'm in my greenhouse and I'm washing pots. I do this very frequently because I don't want any diseases or anything like that in my greenhouse and I reuse my pots. So I like to keep everything clean if I can. I just do a, you know, a quick rinse off. This is Castile soap that I'm using, so it's a very mild soap. Kitty, kitty, you want me to give you a bath? My cat's in here. She is nosy and she loves to follow us around. I'm trying to get all this set up. I put those, um, I put that closet rack up because this last year I started uh, growing garden starts for tomatoes, peppers, that kind of thing. And I was very, it was successful for me. I mean, you know, I'm not trying to make a business out of this or anything, but it was very successful and I was able to sell them. And so now I'm going to try to do that again this next year, have a little bit more variety uh, for garden starts. So I want to get this set up and not have so many of my plants in here that I can't even work or function I want to get this set up where I can put my garden starts in here um, it's still too cold really in here for garden starts but once they get up a little bit bigger they're good to move out into the greenhouse I'll probably still have to start the seedlings off in my house I may have a grow light out here, but I just the temperature, I, I keep the temperature just enough to keep the plants alive, not really growing, alive. And for seedlings, you have to, for them to germinate, you have to have the, the temperature up, you know, 75, 72, something like that, especially for peppers and tomatoes before they germinate. So... It's not, this isn't ideal. I think my husband had the idea that, you know, that's what this greenhouse was for. But the greenhouse is really just to keep plants alive during, a, uh, during your winter. At least here in Texas, that's what they're for. 
I know a lot of y'all in up north and stuff, y'all y'all have to even have your gardens in here. You, you have actual plants in the greenhouse. These are the, um, the containers that I use to start my seedlings in, and then I, you know, I pot them up. Number one, I do it that way because it's, it saves some space right at first and I can get more seedlings going uh, if I do it in these little little containers like this. I got these from uh, Bootstrap Farmer. Uh, I like those. They sell, you know, farming supplies, greenhouse supplies. They're a very heavy gauge plastic. They're not like a thin plastic. They're a heavy gauge plastic. And I know a lot of people don't like plastics, but I mean, if you're if it's not single use and you're using it over and over and over and over, you know, it's a pretty good deal. But I like them because they do sell small, smaller quantities. You don't have to buy, you know, if you buy from a, a greenhouse supply company, you might have to buy huge quantities of these. I have them in different colors. I thought I would kind of coordinate things in colors, and I do that some. Not as kind of as much as I thought I would, but it's, it's okay. It makes it for a colorful greenhouse. Good thing about this Castile soap, I don't put a ton of it in here, but I do put some in here, is that I don't have to rinse it. It's not gonna hurt the plants to have a little soap on it. I'm trying to get all these chores done so I'm looking for the towards the future for springtime so that all these chores are on me for springtime y'all if y'all are buy plants save the pots especially these these nice big uh, thick ones that are a little bit thicker they have a little bit more uh, structure to them save those give them donate those to a school or something that does um, has like a little gardening project um, donate them to a nursing home that might have a gardening project your master gardeners group, donate them to your garden clubs, a gardener that you know, put them in a shout out Facebook if you if you don't want to get you don't want to mess with it. Just say for, free for pickup. Somebody wants to come by and pick it up. You know you can do it without any contact with anybody. Just porch pickup. Uh, you could do you could take them back to a nursery, see if they recycle them and reuse them. There's lots of things instead of these just ending up back in a landfill they're you know you can use them more than one time and I know I try to save them I get them from people I get them from Lowe's Lowe's will donate some sometimes or have like a little recycle bin uh, so you know these are good for your gardeners all right so I have a whole tray washed clean and ready to go when it comes to time for my seedlings Whew, okay, I've been at this all day. I stopped for lunch. I've done a little puttering inside here, though, just to clean up some plants that had just gone kind of crazy. But I wanted to show y'all, I'm not completely done, but I'm finished straightening and organizing and arranging. But I kind of wanted to show y'all where I'm at, and then when I'm done, I will show y'all the finished product. So let me get y'all turned around, and I'll show you where what all I've got accomplished today. Okay, so here it is. Uh, I moved all my seed starting stuff that I'm going to do for seeds over here 
on top of this shelf where I can get to it easy come springtime. I am gonna have plants and stuff over here, but I'm hopefully gonna have enough of a walkway uh, down here that I'll be able to get to all these shelving starts. So these are my all the stuff I use to start seeds and all that kind of stuff. So I was very pleased with that. I do have lots of more uh, plant start trays, but these are the ones for seeds and I, I've moved the other ones closer where if I have to get to them, I feel like I can. So I got all that accomplished. Got my counter over here all cleaned off and straightened up. So I'll be able to clean all that off. Got plenty of empty shelves for some plants when I bring them in or when I have my seed starts for later. Kind of arrange some plants that I've already brought in. Got them in here. Arranged all my shelves. I've got to kind of clean off some of the shelves, but I've got them arranged. Took a lot of pots and stuff out of here that I use. I put them in my storage area. I just want the stuff I need to actually uh, work with plants. And then if I have to need a pot or something to plant something up, that's going to be more in the summertime and the springtime. So that all went to my storage area. I put these little trays in here. They fit, some of them fit better than others, but I put those in there so the plants can sit up off the ground. And um, I don't have rock or anything in there. I put, I did have a little low area over here. I put a little bit of mulch up underneath that one just to, to level that one out a little bit. But got my shelves all organized. And then I have some rock on that end. Um, not enough, but I do have some. And I may bring in some more rock to fill this in eventually. I may get rid of this plexiglass table. But it does make something good to put some stuff on. It's kind of counter height. Sometimes I work on it a little bit. So there's the greenhouse. Now I'm gonna kinda of hose it all down and get it all cleaned out and ready for winter. So I'll be back and I'll show you all the finished product. All right, here's the finished product. Everything is washed down. All ready for my plants for winter. All I have to do is get my husband or my son to shut the windows up top because I did that a couple of years ago and I broke my arm last year, I believe. So I won't be doing that again. <laughs> and get all my windows shut off and then my plants will be ready to bring in. And then I will be ready for springtime to do a lot of plant starts all ready and organized so these are the things that you can do in the fall to get you ready for spring hope this was fun for y'all got to see a lot of things in my greenhouse and in my garden that you liked if you like my channel please like and subscribe and share it with your friend thanks for visiting with me i'll talk to y'all later bye bye